Hi, willkommen an Yong Haseyo, Muli Buanji, wherever you're from or are at the moment. Welcome, I'm Katya and I've been missing on Booktube for several weeks. And thank you for sticking with me if you're a subscriber. I really appreciate it. It was a totally unintentional absence for a whole host of reasons, but I'm back. And I'm sharing my thoughts on the stories I've recently read. So this year, I decided to tackle my box set collection of 50 Penguin Modern Classics. Now, don't be fooled, I have not cracked on and read all 50 of them. I have only read a fifth of them. So that's 10 and a did not finish, which is really rare for me, if you know me. I usually plow through, even if I'm not enjoying something, but I gave up on one of these. So far, do I think buying the set seems worth it? I'll let you know at the end. From the 11 books that I tried, I can confirm that these books provided variety. Now, if you need to become more familiar with the box set, it's been marketed by Penguin as celebrating the pioneering spirit of the modern classics list and includes iconic authors, many of whom I had not read. The books cover avant-garde essays, radical polemics, and if, like me, you had to look up the word polemic, I can now say that it is a strong verbal or written attack on someone or something. Despite your caustic verbal attack, I feel great. The books also included translated poetry and short stories from brilliant and diverse voices across the globe. Said to have been chosen for the collection as being groundbreaking and original in their day and still having the power to move, challenge and inspire readers. So these are bold claims and I was curious how the 11 books I chose would stand up. Clearly, spoiler alert, you already know. One book did not stand up at all. Now it is not Clarice Lispector's Daydream and Drunkenness of a Young Lady. I found this um, stream of consciousness perhaps not to my taste, but I did finish it. It has a feverish narrative, and it was interesting how detached I felt from the characters when they were perhaps in their most vulnerable states. So it's not a style that I'm really used to. When I said that this book was on my reading list in an earlier video, someone commented to tell me that it is their least favorite Lispector. And so that means I'm definitely going to give her writing a try again. Do let me know of any recommendations if you are a Lispector fan. The Vigilante by John Steinbeck reminded me why I love Steinbeck's writing so much when I discovered him first in my late teens. All the stories look at power and domination, including the title story. Then you've got the snake and chrysanthemums. The Vigilante is a disturbing story of a black man who is attacked by the white men in his community and lynched. It is really harrowing. It's understated yet impactful, especially in conveying the complexity of people. And it gave me the feel and, I don't know, the feels and a style that I could really click with as a reader. Then we go on to Food by Gertrude Stein. I'm going to tell you that's the one that I did not read. It was experimental start to finish and several people commented when I had said that I was going to read it that they um, found it strange <laughs> and they'd be interested to see how I got on. So I can totally understand those sentiments. What a collection of random words. Um, I think if I had 60 seconds, I could, you know, put something together, food type and word association. Aubergine, eggplant, purple, a colour, but this is a food. Pairs well with Montepulciano, but with too much garlic, forget a pairing for you. Heartbreak, heartbroken. Now, this is my own style, but I reckon it is on par with her writing of milk in that um, collection. So maybe I'm exaggerating, but I don't think I am. Number three that I read, because we're not counting food, Andy Warhol's Fame, published in 1975 and divided into three sections of love, beauty and fame. This was a fun read. Enjoyable reflections throughout, and especially for me in the love section, love affairs get too involved and they're not really worth it. So that sort of bold statement and then caveats that are unpicked throughout the essay. So it's really satisfying if you're one of those readers who likes to ponder things and not necessarily get a full conclusion, but, you know, looking at absolutes and then thinking about why they aren't absolutes. Well, that's my interpretation anyway. Number four, three Japanese short stories by Akutagawa, Nagai and Uno. 
The translation was really smooth, as these stories flowed wonderfully. The first two stories deal with two main characters who are lazy and disengaged from their surroundings. I loved the depiction of this. There's a sense of entitlement for both main characters, although their backgrounds are vastly different, regarding material wealth especially. Now, the third story isn't a slice of life story like the first two, and is instead fantastical. Um, it has a more detached quality to it. It's told like a fable and has this old style quality to it that is more like tell rather than show. It follows a Korean uh, soldier and how he saves his country from the evil Japanese invaders. It's a concise story and interesting, um, especially if you like that sort of folklore style to it. This definitely made me want to read more from Akutagawa, and I have now gone and picked up the Penguin collection of his writings, Rashomon, and 17 other stories. Number five, Hans Falada's Why Do You Wear a Cheap Watch? It was described as darkly funny streetwise tales of low lives, grifters, and ordinary people trying to make ends meet in pre-war Germany. Now, there are three short stories, one indeed about a man who wears a cheap watch. The funniest to me, though, was the middle story about a part-time journalist, full-time Lothario. I found Falada's writing at times wry, and it struck me that the author is brilliant at character study. The people in these short stories are well-developed, so I looked up more of his work and picked up his novel, Alone in Berlin. Set in 1940, it's an anti-Nazi story, published in 1947, and is based on the true story of a working-class husband and wife, Otto and Elise Hempel. Number six, Franz Kafka's Investigations of a Dog, which is said to be a playful exploration of the limits of knowledge shown by the considerations of a canine philosopher. I like the concept, but I thought the delivery was really boring. It's a satirical story that lost me at various points, and that seemed less about mental gymnastics and more around it just not holding my attention. It looks at logic and reasoning and how they can both be faulty. So number seven, my favorite of the books, I read Cyprian Equency's Glittering City. Main character, Fussy Joe, is a spinner of tall tales and break off hearts in 1960s Lagos. It has a Goodreads rating of just 3.19 and I don't understand how because I would not rate this less than a four. It's satisfying and this character is so easy to imagine. Uh, somewhat sociopathic, um, sparing no thought or um, consideration, I guess, for the outcomes for other people of his actions and so, so quick to play the victim and seek solace from others. He is just such an anti-hero. I won't go into the plot of the story like go into the main story but it felt the most complete of all the books that I read because it is one story from start to finish rather than three really short ones. Equency's characters are so compelling and brought the so much to life including the world building that was also good. Um, 1960s Lagos came across in vivid detail in my mind. So that made me think, I'm going to have to pick up something from him. And I've treated myself to his novel Jaguar Nana. And that follows, again, a main character in 1960s Lagos, said to be an unforgettable heroine. Now, why I am not going to buy a computer by Wendell Berry? Uh, it's a collection of essays, engaging and... Um, Mostly the reactions to his main essay were interesting and then his response to those. It all becomes quite a debate and looking at the pros and cons in many of the arguments that are made. Um, perhaps in his main essay did he come across a little bit like supporting um, misogynistic views uh, in the terms of how he might have taken for granted the work that his wife does for him, and that sort of comes under attack in some of the essays. But there's far more to it. There are so many different topics actually explored. And in the end, I thought, again, it's one of those books 
where you're not looking for the exact conclusion, but you like to unpick the pros and cons going back and forward. There's certainly some criticisms that I have um, in even some of the responses. Number nine, Yuko Tsushima's Off Dogs and Walls is said to include two luminous, tender stories showing how childhood memories, dreams, and fleeting encounters shape our lives. I'll have to think about why the lyrical style in the short stories from Clarice Lispector didn't hook me. And yet, I enjoyed a fairly similar style from Tsushima's collection, which had an overall meditative quality that I liked. Number 10, The Garden of Forking Paths, a collection of fantastical tales of mazes, puzzles, and lost labyrinths. This collection is the first taste that I've had of Georges Louis Bourget, who I'm, you know, I'm probably saying his name wrong, but I've always wanted to read his work, and I have to say the writing was wonderfully concise, making complex ideas come across so, so well, and the plot was also really um, satisfying and philosophical. All in all, reading these books has left me with a positive view of the box set. Yes, I didn't care for food and perhaps daydream and drunkenness of a young lady didn't provide the best introduction to La Spectre. Still, the books have got me interested in authors I'd not tried before and I'm looking forward to reading more from the ones that I've told you about. So that means I now have 39 books left in my collection. Given that I tried 11 this time around, I'm going to try 9 next month. And those are Chinua Achebe's Africa's Tarnished Name, Italo Calvino's The Distance to the Moon, Leonora Carrington's The Skeleton Holiday, Albert Camus' Create Dangerously, Susan Sontag's Notes on Camp, Jean Reese The September Petronola, Dorothy Parker, The Custard Heart, Martin Luther King Jr. Letters from Birmingham Jail, George Orwell's Notes on Nationalism. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of the books that I've just read or am about to read, um, or if you plan to read them. You know, just let me know your thoughts on them. Always interested to hear your views. And a big thank you again for sticking with me during my hiatus. This includes big thanks to my buddy readers during my most erratic reading month ever. And they are Joe Smith, Reiner at Rainier Books, and Lorraine from Reading with Lorraine appreciate you joining me today and if you like this video remember to like and subscribe for future content thanks so much take care and bye